Xcel Energy, like almost all public utilities in the United States, is adding more natural gas to its energy portfolio. And we're working every day to assure that our gas pipeline infrastructure is secure. We operate in eight states. We have 37,000 miles of pipe that range from transmission down through the distribution pipe running in front of your house. A lot of our infrastructure is, is reaching ages now of 50 to 80 years in, in age, and it, it's really kind of met its useful life. Because the gas facilities are aging throughout the country, the federal government launched the Gas System Integrity Management Program. The Integrity Program uh, is a piece of regulation that was passed uh, early in, uh, the, or in the early 2000s, and uh, it basically gave us a deadline for doing what we call baseline assessments. Essentially, we must inspect every square inch and every running foot of Excel Energy's high-pressure gas transmission lines that are located near people in what are known as HCAs. HCA uh, refers to high consequence area. It's a term that allows the public utilities to identify where the population lives closest to the pipeline. Not only buildings and people, but also facilities like hospitals, um, daycares. We have three primary methods available to us. A pressure test, either through a hydro test or a nitrogen test. What we call ECDA, or external direct assessment. The third one is inline inspection, and that's the most robust, it provides the most data, it provides us the most information about our assets. We've actually done an ILI on um, about 550 miles of the 2,300 miles on our system, so that's about 40%, which is very aggressive compared to what other utilities have done. Sometimes the testing devices, which are affectionately called pigs by the field crews that run them, can't fit through Xcel Energy pipes for one reason or another. So Xcel Energy teams must do a lot of assessment and even construction or retrofitting before an ILI test can be attempted. In many cases, uh, these pipelines were installed decades ago and weren't concerned about the ability to put a, uh, a smart tool that may be 20 feet long through the, a pipeline that's eight inches in diameter. And so they may have put uh, elbows in the, in the pipe that were very short radius. Um, in many cases, a smart tool can't pass through that, so we have to dig the pipeline up, uh, replace that short radius elbow with something that's longer that will allow the tool to pass through it. And we're doing a ILI inline inspection on the 10 inch Mesa to Sky Lake line. They basically set up the pig. We launched uh, approximately at 9.30. We're averaging about 5.2 miles an hour, which is perfectly ideal. Uh, approximately, we're gonna be in the neighborhood of 16.2, 16.4 miles. We anticipate we'll have the pig in the, the pen, as I call it, uh, or the receiver, uh, approximately 12 to 12.30. The pig will be removed. Our smart tool vendor then will actually hook a computer into this tool and download the data, it gives us an indicator of the integrity of that pipeline. In addition to all of the testing and improvements that it's currently completing on transmission lines, Excel Energy is currently working on an accelerated main replacement project, which focuses primarily on the natural gas distribution system. The difference of the distribution system compared to the transmission system primarily is the smaller diameter and lower pressure pipelines that carry gas in the city and then the service lines that are even smaller diameter and lower pressure that um, takes the gas into our customers' homes. So if you look at a gas system as a whole, you've got the city gator where we, we purchase, purchase points to get gas into the system and the transmission lines which are kind of like a highway system if you will larger diameter, high pressure, then they go into the distribution system, so like city streets, um, that's where you get the, the smaller diameter, lower pressure, and then eventually a service line that'll take the gas into the, into the, to the meter, into the customer's home. Multiple pipe types um, in the distribution side, we've got anything from um, some cast iron that's still in the ground that was in the early 1920s, all the way up to um, polyethylene pipe, which we've installed today, but there was other um, types of plastic pipe, different polymers that we're finding now are very brittle and suspect 
um, to tree roots or, or frost heave, things like that that will cause leakage. We have what we call the AMRP program or Accelerated Main Replacement Program and that is a systematic um, renewal program over multiple years um, to remove and replace the poor performing pipe types. AMRP is a neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block program. Mike Bruno directs the teams that go into Colorado neighborhoods and replace the old pipes. The main and services will all be renewed in that area. Uh, meters that are inside uh, come to get moved outside. So that's a, you know, that's a pretty big deal in that, you know, in the neighborhood, uh, the, the cast iron that's been there for 50 plus years is all going to be replaced and it's going to be replaced with brand new plastic. Well, most of the piping is, um, it's bored in, directional drilled. So the asphalt, the, the street isn't usually uh, disturbed too much when the main goes in. However, at every service tap, There'll be approximately a three by five hole, and we, uh, we shoot the new service in, again, directional drilling. We're applying some of the technology that we've used on the transmission side, some of the, what we call the smart pigs, um, to do inline inspection on some of our intermediate pressure lines, and that gives us more data about the, um, the corrosion, the extent, the integrity of those lines, where we might not be able to use any other technology or just find out information by normal means. And that helps us understand where we should focus our efforts, um, where the highest risk is, and where we need to, to pay attention, and at what time frame. And that's beneficial because that um, allows us to spend money wisely, targeting our money in the right places at the right time. The steel and the cast iron, are, you know, we're doing that yearly now. When we get the plastic in, that particular area goes to a five-year survey. So there's, there's some real cost benefits to us to get that to get that done as well. And the whole concept is to be proactive, to get ahead of it. Um, so not just, not just business as usual, not just doing minimum compliance, but getting ahead of it and trying to anticipate when that next leak is going to occur or on what pipe type that next leak might occur and take care of it before it happens. Excel Energy is actually going above and beyond federal testing requirements. Um, we also have um, programs in place where we do accelerated leak survey on those problem pipe types. So instead of code required uh, frequencies of three years or five years, we're actually surveying those areas annually. In the next five years, by 2017, we're, um, the plans call for us to run an ILI through an additional um, 350 miles of our system. Um, that's not required by code, that's, that's a corporate philosophy. We're working hard at stepping up and being a leader, as we should be, uh, being one of the largest utilities in the state. Excel Energy's employees are working tirelessly to assure public safety. We're learning new skills and adopting new ways of doing things in the management of our gas system. And it's paying dividends. We have a better idea of the integrity of our pipelines and then we're making it safer for our public or our customer base. Um, the reward is number one that I know we're doing the right thing in terms of public safety. The public trusts us and we're, we're seen as the experts in this area and, and we want to continue that trust level and um, so any opportunity we have to educate them or answer their questions or provide um, further information, we like to take those opportunities. I'm a firm believer in a more proactive stance in operations and maintenance of our systems. Uh, it does over time reduce our overall costs of operating and maintaining our system. It significantly improves our public safety and uh, I believe it also is positive for the employees. You know, you, you're, you're basically anticipating what the problems are, you understand your assets and you're fixing things before uh, uh, something breaks. And, and that's positive all the way around.